Welcome to Peace in the Valley, where adventure starts at home. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Peace in the Valley. With the anticipation of spring, we have a new project we want to work on. And I just got some parts in from Amazon, and I am looking forward to this. So, I hope you'll join me. What we got in, and I'm going to show it to you here in just a second as soon as I get out of my vehicle. We got in some hooks and my goal is to find places to put them on the tractor and the trailer. So you might have to ask yourself why would you want to add hooks to your tractor or why would you need them at all on your trailer? Especially since I already put the D-rings on. Well on the trailer it's probably not so much of a need as it is uh, I would just like them on there. But the real reason is I would like to take the rings and mount them up on here. So let's go look at another idea. Okay, my other idea is putting them, yes, I know my tractor's dirty. It's very dirty. It's, I use it for work. It's not just for prettiness. Okay. I'm thinking about putting hooks on here. Maybe, maybe here. Something like that. What are your thoughts? You think that can work? So this one is what we want to match. This is what we have. And it just it won't it won't stay up. I'm wearing my uh, gloves in anticipation of winter. Oh, I mean spring. For some reason, we're still stuck on winter. are done. Now we can move on to the next step. Clean it off and start welding. Next we are going to cut some steel and we're going to make that the base of some of these, not all of them, or at least not today. My brush is getting worn out. I need to get another one. As you can see, and maybe you can't see, I'll show you right here. Uh, we are about two and three quarter inches, maybe a hair more than that. So I want to measure some steel. And we have these big heavy plates from last year on this 516 steel. And what I would like to do is basically cut it like that and let's see here. Let 
like that. And we'll see how that goes. Now we are going to clean that off. Let's go over it a couple passes. And you can see how nicely it polished right up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And both sides are now nicely polished. We'll go ahead and clamp this in so we can weld it. We're going to set this on here just like that. I don't think I'll need to hold it in place. I think. I think it'll hold itself in place. Get our welding stuff out. It's been a while since I've done any welding. There we go. We're going to turn our power up because we're going through a lot thicker steel than we normally would. That looks good. With the heat expansion, it caused it to lift up. Make sure you never do any welding without your gloves and your helmet. Hey, that's not bad. That's not too bad of a weld, especially for that heavy of steel. We'll touch it up a little bit. Okay, see the weld? I don't think it's a bad weld at all. We're gonna dip it in some water. Looks like I need a bigger cup.
We're gonna make one more just like that. We'll go test it out. Make sure it works. That it's a good size. Okay. So what'll happen is it'll center right here and we will weld that right to the sides. That should give us a pretty big area. I might, for the future ones, I might wanna go a little wider. We just finished our first two. Here's that first one I made. I made the base of the second one a little bit wider. Right there. And uh, that'll give more surface area for it to bond to. But either one I think is going to work fine. They're still pretty darn hot. But I don't think those I don't think those welds are bad at all. I think they actually look pretty good. Looks like they bonded real well. Okay, we'll move on to the next step now. Well, it's the next day. We made two that are narrow and two that are wider. These are gonna be for the bucket. These are gonna be for the three-point. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing now. We are grinding the corner, the edges off of where it's going to surface weld. And that way we'll have an extra surface, I guess I should say, to bond to. Not just the flat part, but it also so it can creep up underneath when I'm welding. And uh, hopefully that will work. You can see what I'm doing. Now what we want to do here is we want to weld these so they are directly in line with the cylinders. So we're going to put one here, actually wrong one, we're going to put one here, okay, and one here. That is the sturdiest part of the entire bucket. So I think that is where we should actually be putting them, okay? And about right there. See that? Okay. Okay, now I think we're ready to start welding. We're gonna hit it here, round the whole thing, and especially up underneath, because that's where the most force is going to be. When it pulls on the chains this way, it will probably, this is gonna be the part that needs the most help. We're going to tack down both sides. Okay, both sides are now tacked down. I think we're going to turn the power down a little bit because the metal on here Metal on here, this part, not this part, but this part, is not as thick. In fact, I think that's the thinnest part. It feels like it's less than an eighth of an inch. This is probably an eighth of an inch right here, and this is probably a sixteenth, maybe a little less. So even though it's reinforced up underneath, we want to 
probably turn down the power a little bit. So, I don't think that's too bad of a weld. I think that looks pretty good. We'll keep testing it, but uh, worst thing I think I could do is probably go too hard on these right now. I don't want to blow a hole through the metal. one's done. I'll have to clean that up a little bit and then we'll paint it. Go to the next one. Okay, the welding is all done on this part, and I think it turned out pretty well. Not too bad. You can see it right there. Next, we want to weld back here. And I think we just want to put it right in there. Well, we're going to try to finish up that project we were working on the other day. We couldn't finish it because it started raining and the wind picked up and it started snowing. I guess we're in April now. So hopefully we're all good. The ground's somewhat froze right now. Not too deep though. Let's get started. What we are going to try to do now is these hooks, chain hooks that I made the other day welded onto these 516 steel. We're gonna try and mount these right here, except on this side. And this way we can hook our chains directly up without using other equipment when we want to haul logs or other things. I think this is gonna save us some time. We're gonna see how this works. And we already put them on the front of the tractor before it started raining and now we're going to try to get this on before it starts raining and we're going to see how that goes. I'm putting it right here because with 
the curve of the three point arms, it should not get in the way of anything. Now I still have not tested the backhoe hooking it up with pats yet. That will be coming soon. I'm gonna center it more on these pins that you see right here, if you can see it. Okay, now I think we can weld that. We're gonna grab our handy dandy Harbor Freight welder, hook that on. So I bought a bucket of chains, literally a bucket of chains.
show you how this works in tent. We wrap a log or something else that we need to pull out. And we come back and that's what we can now hook on to. Or if we want to split that one up, just like that. Nice and tight. The weight is right on the front end loader itself. We're not putting it in the middle where it might bow or bend. We're not putting it on the blade on the front. We are putting it right where the most reinforcement is. And that is why I put that here. So what do you think? Is this, a, is this something that you'd put on a tractor? Or is this just a waste of time and a potential failure? We're doing the same thing on the back too, as you saw. We got those welded on. And I'm thinking the same thing. We use the log, uh, the cant hook, put the chain around it, hook it up to the hooks on the tractor, and then we can lift up and just go. Might even build a sled for the back that we could roll a log right onto on the back end so we're not dragging it through the mud. Haven't got to that point yet. But this is the intent. I've got a log that we could test this on. We might do it. Uh, but I might not. I still need to cut a tree down. I've got a lot of work to do today. And I just want to get this finished for right now. You'll see it in the future work anyway. So be sure to, well, don't subscribe unless you want to. Uh, it takes a while to make the content, but if it's not worth it, don't bother subscribing. Unless you want to, then you can. Anyhow, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the outdoors as much as I am today. And tell me what you think. What would you do? Would you put uh, hooks on your, your bucket and your three-point just so you have a place to attach to without trying to finagle around something? Uh, complete waste of time. Do you have any other ideas that you think should be added on that would make this useful? I've got lots of ideas and we're gonna have another one coming up soon too. I wanna to make a dump truck for the tractor. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, take care, have a great day, God bless, and we'll see you later.